Hey guys, this is Gatsby with Tape, and today you join me for a brand new series. This is, well, what I'm calling right now Project Orion, because it's based on the um, NASA's Orion Project, so it's a very inventive name. Obviously, uh, um, the aim of this kind of series will be a Duna-type thing, because Duna stands in for Mars, so I will need to set an alarm clock for um, going out to Duna. Uh, if you want to know the mods I'm using, because I will be using mods in this series, it's the same as I'm using in Solar Civilization, and I did a video for that a while ago. Um, just basically using my s normal old mods like Ferrum Aerospace and Deadly Reentry, which will be the subject of this video. Uh, things like Kerbal Alarm Clock, it'll all be in something else. Um, so I'm just using this on the pad so that I can set a, an, al an alarm for Duna, which is 57 days away. So I might not send the people out to that exact um, time, but uh, I will at least send a probe. I'm going to be doing my usual thing of putting a week between launches to get some realism. Um, there won't be too much challenge to this, just more of a doing something fun type thing. But uh, I need to do heat shield testing really because I'm not really sure how well heat shields stand up to high velocities. I haven't done a huge amount with it. So I will need to construct some method of testing that um, in the VAB, which I am leaving in. It will be sped up though or it will be horribly boring um, and this video will be rather long. Anyway, I'll call this heat shield test because that's what it is. Um, obviously, I will start with a remote guidance unit or a probe core, and we'll speed it up and just put a few things on. Obviously, the heat shield I'll hopefully be using because that's the one that fits on. If not, I could use an inflatable heat shield, which would be better. I'm also going to put some fuel tanks, uh, a fuel tank, and an engine to accelerate it downward so I can match um, velocities more like coming back from interplanetary speeds because. Uh, I'll be able to just, you know, accelerate downwards as opposed to actually going interplanetary. Um, and it'll need a fairing, obviously, because of Ferrum Aerospace. Uh, this one is a little too small, which is annoying, so I'll use the expanded one, which is uh, not really a shame, just it would be nice to use a smaller fairing, but it doesn't really matter, so let's just clip that on there. We can use just one of those, so it's a fairly small fairing. Um, it'll need an upper stage, obviously, to uh, push it in into the right position. Only a fairly small upper stage because it won't be going into a full orbit. Um, so I'll only need a ro solid rocket booster to push it up through the atmosphere. So that'll uh, look kind of derpy, but I kind of like how this rocket looks. And I'll put some fins on it so it has a little more control. Um, it also has the SAS unit, so it should be fine. Um, so we'll just put some launch clamps on it, and that looks like it will do. Um, I'll take the thrust back a little bit on that solid rocket booster so that uh, it accelerates at the right rate and then we'll put it on the launch pad. Um, yeah, just another kind of solid rocket booster rocket to save money obviously because that's a big concern in Kerbal Space Program. Um, we'll launch straight away, yeah, and uh, I've left this all in because uh, kind of the first episodes of a series you tend to leave launches in. Um, and this is all part of the test because it's not going into a normal um, orbit, it's going to go into a kind of a hyperbolic trajectory. Um, that's probably not the right word actually. Well, it's going to just go really fast downwards basically, so I'm going to try and lift it as high as possible and then just kind of accelerate downwards. It doesn't need to get too high because obviously it will be using its rocket motor on top of the heat shield to accelerate it downwards to simulate um, return trajectories. Um, obviously not to the, f well not obviously, but it it won't actually simulate it to the full extent, which is a bit of a shame, but uh, you know, we'll make do. Um, this is kind of a little unstable, which makes it easy to move around, but hard to keep on the right kind of place where you want it, but I'm not going for any kind of perfect orbit, so it doesn't really matter about inclination slips, but it's still kind of annoying. Um, I'm not really tipping over because it's I want it to just to kind of fall back really hard and hopefully, and I can do g-force testing I guess because with ferrum aerospace and deadly reentry and so on and so forth, um, g-force is actually a problem, it can break your pod, it can break your equipment, it can kill your people obviously, above 9 g's for a long period of time will be deadly to Kerbal so we'll hopefully avoid that. Um, but yeah, we're uh, a little bit down range of the space center now and it's all looking wonderful and then we'll uh, eventually drop that SRB and just, you know, follow the standard, well not any standard launch profile, this is an odd launch profile, but we'll follow follow the profile of course. Um, yeah, because uh, coming back from, uh, this is obviously, I'm, I'm, I'm not too, you know, I'm, I'm fairly well versed in deadly reentry and all this, but I want to kind of simulate what um, NASA will be doing with Orion, so I'm going to do lots of testing, and I will be capturing an asteroid in this series, and then sending various probes to Duna first, and then eventually um, sending an Orion-type spacecraft, probably with a lander. Not all my kind of 
all the bells and whistles that most people send, because Orion's not taking like a hundred rovers and a billion probes and, you know, all the stuff you usually take in Kerbal Space Program. Um, I'm just going to do a few missions, and then maybe I'll move it on to something else, and maybe I'll do, obviously I'll do a few more things than what NASA are going to do, because, I mean, I don't know much about, I don't know all of the stuff about their mission, um, but I'll try to make it as in interesting as possible, and there'll be lots of stuff like asteroid capture, and it'll actually be a pretty good learning experience if you're not amazing at KSP, it'll probably help you learn how to get to doing it. I mean, there's tons of mods on this, so I mean, I'm not sure how insightful it will be, it's just kind of a thing I thought would be interesting to kind of follow the path of what they're doing. So there'll be lots of testing, like flying around the moon and doing all that kind of stuff. Um, for capturing an asteroid, I won't be using solar electric propulsion, be which NASA will be using, because that would be horribly painful. But anyway, we'll get into that later. Well, right now, we've just kind of got to get get ourselves into a arc that will be bring me down very fast, kind of straight through the atmosphere, basically. Um, and I think that is, yeah, the top stage is just fueled out now, so we can just um, ditch the fairings switch to the uh, probe and then just uh, kind of follow it around until we're in the right position um, and then burn downwards to get as much kind of s velocity as we can um, so I'll just orientate it into roughly the right trajectory this doesn't actually have any power generation on it so we do have a bit of a tight budget but as long as I uh, get it you know use the engine and then what the hell was that sounded like a gunshot outside my <laughs> outside of my house I'm sorry for that Seriously, what is that? That's probably a car backfiring, but, uh, yeah. Anyway, um, time to accelerate downwards, I think, would be best. That's annoying and loud. Um, I wonder if that's picking up in the audio. Hmm. Hopefully they'll sound less crazy. <laughs> anyway, let's accelerate. Well, I'm actually accelerating prograde. Um, it looks like retrograde because the rocket's facing backwards. Um, yeah, I'll just kind of point it downwards a little bit more so that it, um, so that it's the where I land is basically the same and I'm just you know increasing my velocity um, yeah I'm not sure how fast I'll actually be going because I mean right now I'm going pretty slowly but I'll obviously speed up on the way down um, that'll be good and wonderful uh, yeah just leave that engine burning um, obviously when I come back I won't be going straight through the atmosphere because that would be rather deadly but this is the first test there'll be later tests in this episode actually of uh, doing more realistic re-entry type things, just to make sure the heat shields work, because I know the multipliers are often a problem coming back really fast, it, the deadly re-entry miscalculates or something, and it all just dies, so hopefully that won't happen. Um, but yeah, and obviously I want to make it kind of realistic, because I mean this year they're doing a re-entry test for Orion, which will be launched on a Delta, Delta IV heavy rocket. Um, which is something like a 20 ton lifter, so they're just going to lift it into the right kind of trajectory and then it's going to do various tests and then it's going to re-enter um, because that's a rather important test. Uh, but anyway, yeah, now we're coming down pretty hard. We'll be able to test this heat shield and hope it doesn't just burn off. Um, but yeah, I we are completely out of electric charge, so I've angled it at the right position so that it's going to be pointing prograde as it enters the atmosphere. Um, well, it's actually going to be pointing retrograde as it enters the atmosphere, but I just left it so that I wouldn't have to have any input, and now it will be held stable by the aerodynamics of the spacecraft, basically a very heavy heat shield, and the rest is fairly light. Um, and there we go, we're picking up flames pretty early. It picks up a huge amount of temperature, but we basically just bomb right through this uh, atmosphere, so it doesn't really make a huge difference. Um, I think it would be more deadly if I spent longer coming back because it would have more chance to heat up, but it's doing pretty well, although we got 12 Gs of deceleration, which would probably kill our crew, so we're going to want to not come back like this, obviously. Um, but yeah, that burns up fairly quickly. Uh, but it survives, so that heat shield will probably be fine. Um, <clears throat> it will be coming back quite a bit faster from Duna, but uh, it's a good test, I think. Um, but anyway, we'll just let this smash into the ground. Almost hit the water, which I was kind of aiming for, because, you know, we don't want to crush any Kerbal Cities. But I don't have the Kerbal City Lights mod on, so no one will die, obviously. Um, unless I positioned the Kerbal directly where it was falling. But that would actually just be so impressive that no one would even be sad. <laughs> be insanely accurate missile testing. But anyway, it slams into the ground and is completely destroyed. But now we need to actually test what it will be like coming back in a real pod. So this is kind of a prototype version of um, of Orion. I'm, gonna, I'm not going to use an Orion mo pod mod. 
Um, I want to do it with, you know, this pod, basically. I just prefer it. Um, because, I don't know, I, I don't really like the mod for Orion, and there isn't really a good one, so, you know, <laughs> I'm just going to use this. Um, but anyway, this doesn't have any crew in it. It's piloted by MechJab. Well, it's actually piloted by me, but it's given control by MechJab. Um, yeah, so I'm going to go into a very high orbit, basically put my Apple apps as high as possible and my Perry apps at about 3 kilometers, so I come back really, um, f really fast and really hard, um, but for a longer duration. Um, uh, yeah, and then we'll see how it survives up against that. And this is a full pod, so it'll be a more accurate kind of description of what goes on. Um, this isn't obviously the finished project the product, this is a really basic version with a small service module which is literally just fuel and an engine. Um, it has a detachable nose cone because it needs to be aerodynamic on launch. It has parachutes, a mech jab unit, some solar panels, it's very basic, there's no life support, there's no um, extra bells and whistles, there's just the raw pod, kind of like what they'll be launch what NASA will be launching later this year. Um, <laughs> Yeah, oh, that's kind of what I was going for, just a really basic thing. And this isn't, obviously, this obviously isn't the launch stage I will be using. I'll be building a proper space launch system um, using the new NASA 3.5 meter parts, uh, which is incidentally much uh, smaller than the real space launch system, but in the kind of realms of Kerbal Space Program, it's very, very big. And you can build some really cool stuff. Um, I've been using, I've been building some space launch systems um, in other saves, and they're quite cool. But this is, well, I guess the equivalent of the Delta IV heavy rocket, um, which has just dropped its first stage, as you saw. Um, this is the equivalent of, obviously, the Delta IV heavy rocket, which will be a, a bringing the, um, what is it, the uh, the the test pair, the test um, Orion craft into orbit this year. Um, well, the Delta heavy actually is, uh, looks very different. It's one of those. Um, Rockets has two outer stages, which are just liquid fuel, and then drops off and does the middle stage. Kind of like Falcon Heavy would be probably more people would know about that. So this was more kind of just like a Delta IV rocket. Um, but yeah, it's it's enough uh, to push it into orbit. And I'm just basically going to keep burning on this sort of trajectory to get me in roughly the right orbit. Don't know really if it's the most efficient way, but I think so. This, this launch profile, really. Um, it doesn't really matter. It gets to the right place. Um... Yeah, this episode is basically just burning things and hoping that they don't destroy uh, destroy themselves. But yeah, just um, when this rocket is burned out, I'll use a service module to put myself in exactly the right position, because obviously that's what that's for. Um, this probably has the Delta V to go all the way to Duna, actually. Um, but it's not going to, because that would be ridiculous. Uh, it Obviously, I'm, I'm, obviously I'm using tech life support. Uh, if you haven't seen any of my other videos, I guess you won't know the mods I use, but I did mention there is a video about them. I'm using tech life support, Varum Aerospace, Deadly Reentry, basically everything that will make it harder, and then stuff like KW Rocketry and B9 Aerospace, just to give me a lot of cool toys um, to play with, because that's fun. I think mods really make a game like Kerbal Space Program. Um, they're just so awesome. Like, uh, Interstellar is pretty cool. Obviously, I won't be using that in this. It'll be a bit cheaty to use a warp drive. I don't think NASA have quite perfected that warp drive yet. Um, no, I think it's still in the working. I actually did see um, a paper or something on a warp drive that NASA had been talking about. I didn't really read much of it because I was very tired and it was quite long. But it's interesting. Warp drive is actually a very interesting technology if you look into it. There is actually theoretical warp drives based in real science, not just Star Trek. But the Star Trek... I think the star the only realistic thing about the Star Trek stuff is the propulsion systems, like their thrusters, um, their nuclear pulse drives, that's a real thing that we don't use because we can't nuclear test in space and we're not really allowed to do much nuclear testing. But anyway, um we ditch the bottom stage and ditch the nose cone, looking very cool, and extend the solar panels that are kind of in an Orion type setup. Uh if you haven't seen anything about Orion, you might want to Google it or this won't make much sense. Um <laughs> Pretty sure I s just slammed into the nose cone, maybe not. Anyway, I'll put this in as high an orbit as possible and then just burn it up. Anyway, I was talking about nuclear pulse drives. Um, yeah, we those would be a really cool thing that would get us places very quickly, but people get all people get all angry when um, <laughs> people start testing nuclear nuclear stuff, especially when America does it for some reason. Actually, that was <laughs> that was just that wasn't a funny joke. <laughs> yeah, but uh. 
you, there's lots of things that could be done to make space travel better. Anyway, um, let's get this Apple apps up um, before I say any more inappropriate things. Uh, I think I'm going to put it at about 75 million meters because um, that's about as high as I think I can get it. I'm not sure actually what the sphere of influence of Kerbin is, but that's pretty high up. So, and then we'll pull our um, Perry apps down a little, a little later. Um, yeah, uh, talking of America, I watched Scott Manley's. Um, he's he w filmed a bunch of uh, fireworks on Fourth of July and sped it up. It looks so awesome. Um, like in California, uh, uh, over I think San Francisco's where he lives, and he just and he filmed it and sped it up, and there were just so many fireworks. It was awesome. Um, yeah, didn't really have that here. Britain doesn't tend to celebrate American independence for some reason. No idea why. Um, because they stole the country from us. Actually, I think America would really suck if it was still Britain. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. America's awesome. That's where I want to live. It'll be legendary. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyway, back to what's going on here, rather than talking about the 4th of July. Oh, actually, no. Stop. No, continue talking about the 4th of July. The uh, Grand Theft Auto V update was awesome. They gave you a musket and a firework launcher. It was just legendary. And a bunch of, like, monster trucks and stuff. It was an awesome update. So, awesome 4th of July stuff. And the musket's ridiculous. But anyway, um, now we're coming back and we're going rather fast. I could burn downwards to speed myself up a bit more, but that's not in the parameters of this mission. The boys back in the lab would be rather angry if this went rogue. Um, this isn't much of a series with the opportunity for things to go rogue. I mean, like, Operation Black Hawk, that has quite an opportunity for it. Solar Civilization could if I start expanding it into other things, but this is more of a do-the-mission type thing, which will be fun. I reckon. Anyway, let's ditch the service module. Annoyingly, those solar panels weren't uh, connected to the service module, they were connected to the pod, which is not what my intention was. I want all that stuff to be connected to the service module, because that's how it should be. So I'll try harder on that in the next episode, in the next, well, on my next iteration of this spacecraft. Not sure what I'll be doing in the next episode, probably identifying some asteroids or something. But right now we need to uh, hope that this doesn't burn up and die. Uh, <laughs> Ah, I've just had lots of time to talk about things, especially Orion, which would make sense. But anyway, we're coming down. It's already starting to burn up at 37 kilometers up, which is pretty ridiculous. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, yeah, it's really heating up. Um, it's, yeah, those those are the solar panels exploding uh, because those weren't shielded. But it cools down and it doesn't even really get above 1,000 degrees, but now it's heating up again? What are you doing? Go home, heat shield, you're drunk. <laughs> Yeah, so we'll just... It, but it seems to come back fine, so I reckon if I speed that up a little bit more, it will be fine. Because it's an ablative heat shield, so it cools stuff down by melting, basically. Because if something doesn't... Because basically, when it when the stuff heats up on an ablative heat shield, it just kind of melts and flies off, so that it doesn't gain too much heat in one place, because by the time it's heated up, it's gone and ablated. Anyway, let's open the parachutes, and I really do need to install the real shoots mod, because real shoots is really cool, and normal shoots are a bit dangerous, but it shouldn't be too much of a problem. Although, landing on shoots on a um, Duna is going to be difficult. I tend to land on a mixture of shoots and uh, rocket engines on Duna, because it has a really thin atmosphere. Um, and it's really easy to get into orbit, so I can use a bit of my engine fuel. Um, yeah, I'll have to develop a lander as well. That'll be cool. I'll, I'll, I'm gonna, I'm gonna think of something really innovative for that. Um, I do, I don't want it just to be a, like a really bog standard mission. There is gonna be some, uh, I because I, I don't know everything about what's gonna go on in the mission. I mean, they haven't released all that stuff. I can do some innovating, and there will be always interesting stuff like maybe the way I capture the asteroid or what I do with it or especially the lander for Juno, that'll be awesome. Unlike anything you've ever seen. Um, probably not, but it'll be it'll be at least somewhat cool. But anyway, as this falls in the cinematic-y view, um, it's time for me to say this is the end of the episode, and I hope you've enjoyed this, and I hope you're looking forward to this series as much as I am. Um, the next episode will be something cooler than this. I, this was just kind of and more of an announcement video and testing heat shields than anything else. So, yeah, anyway, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, this has been Cast Me With Tape. I will see you next time.